Today, I walked into the putting green and I saw 10 faces that look just like mine. Now to some, that may not be a big deal, but to me, that's a huge deal. And it's also a sign that the game of golf is growing. It's becoming more diverse and more voices are becoming a part of that conversation. And the reason the game is expanding because of organizations like the APGA. They're providing opportunity and resources to players who in the past may not have had the chance to make it to the PGA Tour. But today, we're seeing that happen and we're seeing it firsthand. APGA, a lot of people may not necessarily know what it is or, or what it's about. Can you just break it down for us real quickly? Well, the APGA uh, has been a passion of mine for a while. We started back in 2010 and uh, just as a way to, to get more African-Americans and other minorities onto the PGA Tour. We started with three tournaments on inner city golf courses. And when we saw uh, how excited guys were and how good the players were, we knew we were on to something and we really uh, started to grow the tour. We partnered with the PGA Tour in 2012 and that gave us a lot of credibility. We'll have 18 tournaments. We'll be on major championship quality courses like Valhalla, Baltusrol, Torrey Pines. And getting these players to the PGA Tour is more than just getting them access to fancy courses. The APGA, or Advocates Pro Golf Association, provides resources like coaching, club fitting, and fitness training. All things that help level the playing field before, I think the guys had the dream. My goal is just to give them the tools, give them that opportunity, and then from there, we just see what happens. Talk to me a little bit about like the APGA and like what it means to be on the APGA. Yeah, so I've been playing in the Advocate since I was a freshman in college. I just saw the competition and kind of the, the next steps that the tour was starting to take and I wanted to be a part of it. The Advocates has done so much for me over the past five years. And now that I'm able to have my pro life on the Advocates, it's just, it's been a very smooth transition, but it's all thanks to the Advocates for allowing me to be in that position in the first place. Now, some people are like, oh, he's on the APGA, he's going to the tour, it's easy. That's easy, that's an easy step. Like, talk to me about like the work that goes into it. Like, is, is, it, is it easy? Should I be trying to get into Advocates? Well, I would definitely recommend everybody, <laughs> everybody try to play in at least one Advocates event to just kind of see how it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good tour for people to really compare their game to if they do or do not want to take that next step to trying to commit their life to trying to play professional golf. I just want to talk a little bit about like your journey. Like how do you how do you end up here at the uh, at the APGA? Like where, how did you get that to that point? I went to Q School when I was 23. I was fresh out of college, and I got full status on the Latin America tour, and I ended up missing my card. So after I missed out on that card, we started targeting the APGA events because they were in the States and um, there's a lot of other golfers who, were, who looked similar to me and I thought it was a pretty cool environment to be a part of. So just started playing those and ever since then I've tried to make it a priority to get to as many of these as I can, you know. So I feel like it's, it's a great tour, it's great competition and it's kind of rare <laughs> within yeah. this game to play with people that are like similar to me, you know? Yeah. Looks wise. So. Looks wise, yeah, for sure, for sure. So there's definitely like a level of comfort out here that I feel yeah. a lot more comfortable playing in these and some other events that I've been in the past. Has the grind stopped or is like, is that like? No, I wouldn't say that the grind necessarily stopped because a lot of us still have aspirations to play on the big tour. So it's kind of like try and use this as leverage and a little bit of a, a boost to try and get our confidence up and. It's not even really about money at this point. It's just kind of getting those practice reps in so that we will be ready for those bigger opportunities. And those bigger opportunities are happening. As the APGA Tour has grown, multiple APGA players teed it up on the Corn Ferry, PGA Tour Latino America, and Form Tours in 2021. And then several were awarded exemptions into events on the PGA Tour. Kamaya Johnson. Ah, nicely done. Good birdie here at 12. 
how do you see the APGA Tour benefiting you and, and like your game specifically? Yeah, I mean, the APGA Tour benefits me because like, at the end of the day, like if it wasn't for the APGA Tour, if it wasn't for Ken Bentley fighting for more diversity in golf, you know, I wouldn't be an ambassador for farmers. Right, right, right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it was Ken Bentley who put me in front of a press conference and the CEO of Farmers just so happened to walk in and fell in love with my story and said, hey, I want to do whatever it takes for you to make it to the next level. That's dope. And I think that the world is changing and the APJ Tour came along at the right time. The right time. Is there a need for more diverse voices on the PGA Tour? Do Absolutely. You, do you need it? Yeah. Like, and, and, like, why? Yeah, because at the end of the day, I mean, you're tapping into a different culture. Viewership's gonna go up. Participation in the game, that's gonna go up. Golf needs to look more like America, right? Right. That helps the game out tremendously. How do you change that? How do you make golf look more like America? What are some of the things that you think need to happen in order for that to, for that to be the case? You, you give people an opportunity who would not necessarily get that opportunity in that platform, I'm not saying change the narrative of golf, but you change the narrative of how people get introduced to the game. You really like open up doors for kids and you start programs, right? You start programs and you keep your hands on those programs and I guarantee you that you'll see the change that you want to see and that the world wants to see in the game of golf. So I've been playing golf for actually 20 years now. I'm only 22, but I've, I picked up the club for the first time when I was two um, at the driving range with my dad, Jackson Park, Chicago, right by the lake. And I started playing in probably like U.S. kids tournaments, junior events, probably when I was like seven or six years old. So I've been in the competition part for, for a good amount of time, but I've been pretty much swinging my whole life. Let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about like your golf journey. Where did it, where did it start for you? Uh, so my dad played collegiate basketball. Uh, he kind of played golf his leisure. Um, taught me golf when I was growing up. So introduced me to the first tee program. I was first tee program with Northwest Louisiana. Fell in love with golf at a young age and just stuck with it, man. Ended up realizing I was actually pretty talented at it. So continued giving it my all. I knew that I wanted to play golf in college for sure because the business aspect of it because my mom is an investment banker so i definitely want to have that under my belt i love that as someone who's never really entered a competition like what's that what's that life like what's that grind like competition golf is definitely a completely different animal than just you know occasional golf on the weekends and stuff it's pressure and then adding the competition component to it is Definitely something that you just have to get used to and just putting yourself in that position time after time. You happen to be one of the, the few players that are part of the APGA Tour. Yeah. Like, what is, how, how do you think that's going to play into your legacy? Just with my story, it's just, it's inspiring. People ask me all the time, like, you know, why do you post on social media a lot? Because, like, I got kids in my community that don't really know what they're going to do tomorrow or where their future is going. And I was that that kid at 15 years old dropped out of school. You know, I had no idea like where my career was going and then I found golf. So, you made it, you're done, you're good. You're good now, you're done, you've made it. Nothing else to do? Yeah, I got a lot to do, got a lot to do. <laughs> I wanna be one of the top players on the PGA Tour and I got a long way to go. You mentioned that your, your parents are in the military. In my mind, that's like, oh, discipline. And then I think about, oh, yeah. golf, super disciplined. Like, would you say that background plays a lot into into your game and how you've been able to reach this level? Yeah, I would say that definitely helped me to like a standard of, of discipline. My parents were both in the Air Force active duty and I feel like they instilled that with me with like the work ethic side of it of like, if you have a goal, which for me was to make it to be a professional golfer, they're like you gotta follow through and see through to it. So doing golf and staying in competitions kind of kept me out of trouble regardless. Yeah. Just cause like I wasn't, I wasn't that kid in high school I was interested in going to parties and things like that. Right. I kind of wanted to make sure I had like my business taken care of on the golf course first. So that was always my main priority. Your main priority. Yeah. You're never not learning in this game. And that's what I love about this game. It's always a grind. And, and a lot of people don't know, you. if you win in this game on the PGA Tour, the highest level, 5%, you're a Hall of Famer. And that goes to show a lot how much hard work goes into this game to win. I love the game. That's where my heart is. I'd like to see younger kids my same color as me doing the same thing. So that's just how I look at it. With the backing of the APGA, these players are taking care of business on and off the course. 
but they're also changing the look of the game and looking good doing it. You see similar faces, um, similar swag, I guess. <laughs> Bring your, you know, your personality, your own, your own jib to the game. So I definitely enjoy it. I think it's definitely beneficial to our community, minorities, and everybody, man. So I, I think that's the, the way that the golf game is going for sure. I like the shoes, though. Those are Thank you, man. Thank you, bro. Thank Thanks, you, bro. I have the Yeezy um, Zebras, the zebras? Like when they first came out. Yeah, yeah. And a reseller knocked me upside the head, so I got them for like way over the price I should have. But oh. and then they re-released them like three or four times, and yeah, they got devalued. As the sneaker guy, I'm always worried about what I wear, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm trying to bring that to the golf course. How do you feel about like the changing of like style on the golf course? Is that something that I love it? Yeah? Yeah, I love it. Are you into it? So, I'm definitely into it. Like, I see a lot more guys wearing Jordans and things of that nature, trying to swag it up a little bit. And I see guys on tour wearing hoodies and things like that. So they're trying to present golf more as a, like an athletic sport, if you will. I think you could grab a kid who's, let's say, a sneakerhead and they play basketball. They start seeing golfers wearing the shoes that they wear to their school to kind of flex to their friends. They go, oh, what's this golf thing about? So. It's all about introducing new people to the game. So I think that's definitely an avenue that uh, golf as a whole could take. And I'm definitely a stand for it, for sure. I see you got the studs in the air. That's a that's a look, yeah. that's a look. You don't, you don't see a lot of people on tour with that look. Like how how important is it to you to kind of bring your own like flavor and to the, to the game? Yeah, I rock the earrings for sure, just to, <laughs> That's the goal is to kind of bring flavor and just kind of be myself out there, letting my golf game talk for itself at the end of the day. So I know you're into, into sneakers. Yep. Uh, basketball shoes, skateboarding shoes, lifestyle shoes, what's your choice? I'm a lifestyle kind of shoe. Love dunk. You have a favorite? Or colorway or colors? I got some pink and white ones. I got some, some green, black. Like all colors. All like I'm colors? A, yeah, yeah. Pretty much my favorite kind of shoe is the Dunks and One. Dunks and One? Yeah. I can appreciate that. Yep. I can appreciate that. I love the game of golf. I love grinding. I love every aspect of the game of golf. And I love being around golf. How important is that is it to have like almost like your brothers there there with you going through the same thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's it's real important to me. I mean, it's just good to have those guys that are trying to do the same thing you're trying to do because at the end of the day, like that's what Lee Elder and Charlie Sifford and those guys did back in the day, like because they weren't allowed in, to receive their checks inside the clubhouse, right? Like they dealt with so much, but that's why they were so good because they took each other in and like they helped each other. They got each other better. I think that's gonna help us get to that next level, which is a PJ Tour. Every next step is a learning opportunity. And so for me to be able to compare my game to guys who, you know, have been pro for five, 10 years, every opportunity that presents itself, I just make sure to try to take it all in and, and just see how I can better myself every day. It's like part dream, part grind, and kind of bringing those two together. Together. And that, that's going to push you all the way Because, I mean, through. it's hard to have a bad time out here. Like, right. <laughs> look at the views. Like, this is it's just, yeah. it's great. How far away do you think you are from from being on being on the tour? I think I'm right there. It's just a lot of us out here just need more opportunities. I think a lot of us have the game. It's just getting more and more reps, more and more reps, and you never know what you can do with those reps. So yeah, those opportunities. Those opportunities are huge. How has the APGA, I guess, matured? Or where do you, where do you, how do you feel like it's helping those players right now? Well, I think it's come a long way. But now I think we have to focus even more on getting them into big tournaments, to getting them the, the right tools, the right coaching. We've had players like Billy Horsham, mm -hmm. who has been just an unbelievable supporter of the tour. He calls guys to talk to him about, you know, how to prepare. Ricky Fowler is the one that got Willie Mack the exemption into the Rocket Mortgage. So these guys are saying, look, we like what you're doing. We want to help these guys get to the next level. So if, if you ask me what do I see in the future, I see three or four guys winning on the PGA Tour, but I also see the golf industry looking like America, and that, that would be success to me. Look, the APGA is not an instant PGA Tour card, 
and it was never meant to be, but it is an opportunity for players that otherwise wouldn't even get the chance to make it. Today at the course, I saw a bunch of black men on the putting green practicing for a tournament. That's not an everyday appearance, but that's something that I think we will see more as more guys get those opportunities to play the game, play the game at a high level, play courses like these, and get the chance to make it to the PGA Tour. I'm Jacques Slade, and stay tuned to Voices because we have a lot more coming.